Hi, this is Paul Knopfler here at UC Davis School of Medicine. I've been a professor here for more than 15 years. My lab studies stem cells and cancer. And I'm doing this series of videos to help fact check things that are sort of out there in the stem cell and regenerative medicine space. Uh, the focus of today's video is on stem cell therapy side effects. So what can go wrong if you go to an unproven stem cell clinic? They don't really have a lot of science behind them. They haven't gotten FDA approval. Uh, and in fact, the risks there can actually be pretty high. And we're starting to learn more about what can go wrong with stem cell clinics. Um, and so I thought it's a timely time for this, um, this focus of this video. And I've recently done a post on this. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen on that and kind of go through that post together. So here again is my site, The Niche. Uh, this is both a blog, but also has many resources, including for patients as well as scientists. Um, so check it out. It's at ipscell.com. Uh, you can have a page on stem cell videos. And, and so I've really been trying to add to this collection of videos here on our uh, stem cell YouTube channel. So if you like this or some of the other videos, please subscribe. I'm gonna regularly add uh, newer videos. So thinking about uh, stem cell therapy side effects, there's a lot that actually can go wrong. I should note that what I'm focusing on today is going to these clinics, right? Not really going and getting a bone marrow transplant or a hematopoietic stem cell transplant for like a blood cancer. That's really a separate topic. So if you go to an unproven clinic and by unproven clinic, again, I just mean they don't really have science behind them. Uh, and they're really just in most cases trying to make a lot of money. Um, there's gonna be risks. And unfortunately, some of the clinics, you know, they kind of say, well, the worst that can happen is that nothing will happen. You know, the stem cells won't work that well. We definitely know that's not true just because of more news reports. Uh, my colleague here at UC Davis School of Medicine, Gerhard Barrow, was part of a team that published a paper on side effects. The Pew Charitable Trust uh, just came out with a new special report on stem cell clinic side effects. So check that stuff out. I have the links to those uh, pages here on uh, this blog post. So I thought I'd start by uh, talking about one of the most high profile cases. So in this case, people got injections of what were supposedly stem cells derived from fat into their eyeballs to try to help them with uh, some moderate vision loss that they had. And what happened was really catastrophic. The cells, the fat stem cells or some other kind of fat cells that were in that syringe um, once they got in the eyeball, they did all kinds of damage to the eye. You can see pictures here of these eyes. Here's the back of my eye, just lots of blood, tissue damage. I think in part what happened in these cases, although it's not 100% clear, is that the fat cells that got injected, they were this type of cell called MSCs, uh, which are mesenchymal stem or stromal cells. Uh, and these cells are really similar to another kind of cell called fibroblasts. And MSCs can also turn into fibroblasts. And fibroblasts are, are kind of like the building blocks of a lot of our tissues, they're in connective tissues, but they're really good at making scars too. And so it's possible that what was injected into these eyes, basically it became sort of these scar tissues that were kind of able to generate force and kind of pull and, and led to, uh, in some of the cases, uh, detachment of the retina. So this was really a disastrous situation, uh, led to all kinds of lawsuits. Unfortunately, those suits were, settled in such a way that a lot of times we didn't get all the, the data, but there were papers. In fact, these images are from a paper that provided some information on this horrible case. So uh, part of the reason why stem cell injections at clinics pose risks is because stem cells are just so powerful. And so, like I said, the, the cells that were injected into the patient's eyes in that, in that one, at that one clinic uh, that's now been shut down by the FDA, um, you know, they could change into other kinds of cells that, that can cause damage. And so anything that's so powerful like stem cells and has power to potentially be good, and stem cells really do have, you know, clinical potential and there's hundreds or thousands of clinical trials going on. So a lot of legitimate excitement, but there's a flip side to it. Anything that can help can also pose risks, right? Even something like aspirin. Uh, recently, uh, one of the committees on heart disease and aspirin found that maybe people who don't have heart disease, you know, they should think twice about even taking something like aspirin because of risks of bleeding. And so stem cells are really powerful. They're gonna pose risks. Don't believe anyone who says, you know, the worst thing that can happen is nothing. The, I think the scariest risk, but maybe it's, it's relatively low in, in many cases is that you get a stem cell injection, maybe you're gonna get a tumor or a cancer form. And, and this is a real possibility in some cases. You know, again, fortunately, I think we haven't seen a ton of that over the years. There have been some cases where people got cancer and died after getting stem cell injections, but um, 
it's it's not something that happens every day. Um, and so the reason why, again, this can happen is stem cells can really grow very quickly. And, and that's similar to what happens uh, in a tumor. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's something to keep in mind as a possibility. I think uh, it's less likely to happen if you're not modifying the cells. So like if you take out cells from a patient, you just immediately inject them back into the patient. There's still a possibility that it could cause some kind of tumor. Um, tumors range from like a benign tumor to uh, an actual cancer. And so, um, you know, again, it's something that you can't totally dismiss. I've had patients ask me this question, um, can cells uh, that were never grown in a lab, so sometimes these clinics will take cells out from a patient, grow them in a dish, and then give them back to the patient. But if you don't do that, the risk is lower, you know, but you still can't entirely rule out the possibility um, that there, there could be a tumor that has grown. Probably the, the biggest thing to worry about, I think, with just the general area of stem cell clinics, if, if you're someone who's thinking about going to one, is the possibility of getting an infection. And so part of what's going on here with this risk of infection is that oftentimes these clinics or the suppliers that give themselves um, are not doing things carefully enough. Maybe they don't have enough expertise. And so bacteria can get into these things or viruses. And the most catastrophic example of this was a product from a company called Livion somehow bacteria end up in this product. Uh, it was a product that was injected um, into patients, I believe in different ways, like into joints or IV. And so a new paper just came out um, in one of the JAMA journals uh, from the CDC. They did an epidemiological investigation of this incident and found 20 people got infections from this product that was contaminated with bacteria. 19 ended up in the hospital. Many were in the ICU and it's really just a miracle that no one died from this. So it's really important that um, you use careful sterile technique when you're working with some kind of biological product like stem cells or other kinds of cells that are gonna be injected into a person. So another thing that we know is a risk is if you get injections of cells, especially IV, <clears throat> and so especially like fat stem cells or other kinds of cells that don't really belong in your, your bloodstream, they can form these like little clumps. Those clumps can sort of catalyze formation of clots in your blood and as the blood circulates, a lot of times things that are kind of foreign or larger things like clots end up getting kind of filtered out in the lungs. Sometimes that can be uh, a sort of the first stage leading to a pulmonary embolus or a blood clot in the lung, which can be really serious. And so we know uh, with some stem cell clinics that some people have actually gotten pulmonary emboli. There's a variety of other possible risks as well. Uh, some patients have asked me if they get um, cells from some other person. So like the clinic they're going to doesn't use their, the patient's own cells, but they have sort of an off the shelf product of someone else's cells. You know, that's not like a match. You know, if you think about like an organ transplant or a bone marrow transplant, a lot of you have probably heard of this idea. You have to get an immune match. So the cells kind of recognize you as self. Um, so if you're getting an injection at a clinic and it's somebody else's cells, the worry is that those cells that are being injected into you um, if they can change into immune cells, maybe they're kind of already like immune cells, um, those cells could attack you uh, after they're transplanted into you. And this is what we mean by graft versus host. Like you're, if you're the patient, you're the host and graft is the cells that are being given to you. If those cells have immune properties, they could see you as foreign and attack you. I haven't seen a lot of reports of this uh, in the sort of stem cell clinic sphere, but it's definitely something that um, we have to worry about. Um, uh, the other possibility is that while you may not get like an outright huge tumor or a cancer or something like that, stem cells can turn into other kinds of cells. And so one example was, this is from many years ago, was a patient was uh, getting some kind of cosmetic procedure on their eyes, got uh, an injection, I believe it was of these MSCs, again, mesenchymal stem or stromal-like cells. Um, and those cells are really good at changing into bone, and this patient actually got growth of bone in her eyelid. So definitely something that would not be good. Uh, another area that's kind of emerging right now that is popular with clinics is internasal administration of stem cells, kind of like squirting it up your nose or snorting stem cells up your nose. So this has not been studied very well, and, and I think it could be extremely risky. I think the clinics are being irresponsible with this. Now, part of the problem is that the inner part of your nose is really close to your brain. And in fact, 
putting cells way back up in your nose could allow them to actually get into your brain. And, uh, you know, if you're going into a clinic just to try to feel better or something or for arthritis or, you know, some other condition, you really don't want these random cells up inside your brain that could cause a lot of trouble. Um, trying to think of some other examples. Yeah, some patients have also had really weird immune responses after they get stem cell injections. So there's actually a well-known thing uh, where you get kind of a, a transplantation reaction after getting a stem cell infusion. And this can happen uh, with these sort of other legitimate cases where you're getting like a, a bone marrow transplant or hematopoietic stem cell transplant. Sometimes just getting that injection of cells causes you to like to get a fever and have other problems. And, and so when people go to stem cell clinics, sometimes their immune system responds in unpredictable, bad ways to injections of cells. And, and, and that can be really dangerous. So it's something else to, to think about very carefully. Finally, before kind of wrapping up, I wanted to talk about how there's a lot we don't know about stem cells. Um, we've known of stem cells for a very long time, but we still don't know them that well in a lot of cases. And so I think there's a lot of potential unknown risks especially if you're giving cells to kids or you're giving someone cells who, you know, maybe they are uh, immunocompromised. These cells, uh, cells given to a patient in that kind of context might tend to hang around longer, maybe forever. And they could do things down the road that we just uh, can't predict very well. So again, the topic of today's video was the potential for uh, stem cell therapy, uh, stem cell therapy side effects. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, if you like these kinds of videos, please subscribe. I'll be uh, doing more videos in the future. And if you wanna learn more about the potential for stem cell therapy side effects, look in the description of the video, I'll have a link to this post uh, there. So I hope to see you next time, bye.